Hello everybody, in today's review we're going to be looking at the brand new B-Link GS1 TV box. It's got the all new, all winner H6 quad core processor which would be interesting, but the most interesting point about this box is that it boasts that it can handle up to 6K in video quality for both video playback and recording, the first box of its kind to make such a claim. So we're going to be unboxing it today and taking a quick look at what we get inside the packaging and having a little look at the box itself and the build quality and stuff like that. Then I'm just going to plug it in, fire it up and have a look at the firmware, see if it can handle some stuff I'm going to throw at it and we'll just kind of wing it from there. So my name is Scott and you are watching the MXQ Project. So here is the packaging for the B-Link GS1. TV box. It's quite unassuming packaging, but it's quite nice and it feels well made. It's got this writing on the front that says 6 B-Link. Now, I'm not sure what the 6 signifies. It could be that it signifies the 6K video playback capabilities that the box has, or it could just be that it's got the new all-winner H6 processor in, or it could be both. It's got a spec sheet on the back here, so it tells us how much RAM it has, for example, 2GB here. But the full specifications will be in a link in the description, so check down there if you want to know the full specs. So now let's just get this thing unboxed and see what the box itself is like, and have a look at the other little trinkets that we get in the box as well. So here we have the B-Link GS1 itself. It's very unassuming and very unobtrusive, and it would look quite nice under your TV, I think. Very plain, but it's got that shiny writing on the front. It's also very small as well, which is nice. Now, on the back here, we've got the usual kind of inputs and outputs. We've got the 5 volt input. It's the same kind of plug as an MXQ box, for example. Standard 5 volt AC adapter will work. It's got a USB 2.0 plug. It's also got HDMI output, gigabit Ethernet input, and it's got an optical audio output as well. On the side here, we've got a USB 3.0 port and an SD card reader. And that pretty much sums up the box itself, uh, the physicality of it anyway. So let's move on to all the other little bits that we get in there. Next up, we get the standard Chinese manual, if you can call it that. Pretty useless, it's only about two pages anyway, it just kind of shows the inputs and outputs that the box has. Not very helpful at all. Here we have the power supply, it's a standard 5 volt power supply with an EU plug on the end here, but you can choose whatever plug is best suited for your area or region when you buy one of these things, you do get a choice. And here we have the HDMI cable that comes supplied with the box. It's actually quite nice and sleek design really, but it'll work the same as any old cheap HDMI cable will do. And last but not least, we have the standard IR remote control. It's the type we see with most B-Link products, and I'm probably not going to end up using it because they all work kind of the same, and I'll probably end up using my air mouse as usual. So now that we've got it all unboxed, let's move on and boot this thing up and see what it can do. So, the first thing I would like to do is just apologise for the really poor video quality that you're seeing right now. The reason behind this is that the GS1 isn't working with my screen capture hardware. Now, I've got a little screen capture box that I bought from China. It's quite cheap, quite a long time ago, and it normally works absolutely spot on. If you've watched any of my other videos, you'll know that the footage that I get from the TV boxes that we review is normally crystal clear, and it all works really, really well, but for some reason, it's not working with this B-Link GS1. Now, I'm not sure if that's a firmware issue, or whether it's something at a kind of kernel level, or whether it's HDCP protection, or DRM protection, or anything like that, but I can't seem to fix it. So, at the meantime, I'm going to have to do this the old-fashioned way, and point my DSLR straight at the TV. And it's not ideal, I'm afraid, but it is what it is. It's not working with this box, and that means that it's not off to a great start, at least for me. But anyway, we've powered it up, and here is the basic B-Link launcher. You'll have seen this a dozen times before if you've ever owned a B-Link device or you've watched any of our B-Link reviews in the past. So it's got all the bells and whistles here. You've got space for custom shortcuts to various apps if you wanted to add some to the home screen. You've got the settings tab. You've got the app drawer, a clock, and all this kind of stuff. You've got the task killer thing here. So you click that, it just kills any unneeded background processes and frees up your RAM. And that's basically it. Don't need to go into too much detail. So if we just go into the settings tab here, we can go down to the about section and just verify what version of Android we're running. And we can see that we're running Android 7.1. Not sure why it's not 7.1.2, but there you go. It's also got a wireless update app accessible from here as well, but they rarely put those out, at least in my experience. I've never seen one. But you can go on here and check if there's an update they've put out over the air. But usually it's something you have to do manually. So if we move on now, we're going to take a quick look at Cody running and see how it runs on this box. 
So an interesting thing has just happened, I've installed and opened the Kodi app and as you can see it has completely crashed out on me. I'm not sure why this is, but it's crashed the entire box it would seem. Now I've actually done this a couple of times before I recorded this one, just to see if it was maybe a one-off, but it seems to be happening almost every time. It's just crashing the entire system and I'm having to pull the plug and cut all power from the box just to get it back to the home screen and you'll see in a moment the processes is not responding dialogue has come up which means it's crashed everything going on in the background as well so overall not impressed with this box so far guys okay so now we come to where this box has really kind of impressed me it scored a benchmark of 44,138 which is very respectful and according to Antutu puts it in the mid to high range level so it'll be interesting to see when we try a game a little bit later on whether it lives up to that or not and now I'm just going to bring up the DRMN4 just quickly because it's becoming an important part in choosing a TV box and it has scored a Google Widevine Security Level 3 which means that it is not going to be compatible with Netflix Full HD or 4K video which is unfortunate but not entirely unexpected at least on my part. I wasn't expecting this to be Widevine Level 1 which means it's not going to be officially supported. Asphalt 8 now and I'm just in the menus here I'm showing you because when I first installed and booted this up the menus are actually really laggy but it seems to have settled down now that I've opened it again which is an improvement but still not ideal that I have to go and restart everything. Now if we go into the settings here we can see that it has defaulted to high settings so maybe that's because of that higher benchmark result that we got a bit earlier so we're just going to jump in now and see how it plays. Now I'm not sure how this is showing up on your screen with me having to use the DSLR rather than my screen capture hardware but for me it is playing quite slowly and laggy and there's some frame rate drops and it's not an overall smooth experience which is unfortunate. Um, so it's going to benefit from maybe putting the settings down to medium if you're going to play games on this like Asphalt which is quite a graphically intensive game as you know. and. Yeah, I'm not overall impressed with this on high settings at least. I was hoping that it would work on high with having that higher benchmark score and a higher 3D score as well during that benchmark test. But unfortunately not, it is quite slow and laggy on the higher settings. So if you've got one of these and you want to play games, just put those settings down a bit and you should get a slightly smoother experience. Now I was asked at the end of my last review in the comments, which was for the Wii Chip V8 box, which by the way you should watch because it's a fantastic piece of kit, if I could do internet speed tests in my future reviews, so I'm obliging. So I'm going to do one just now, but bear in mind that several times so far the Wi-Fi has completely cut out on me, so I've not been very impressed with it. Also the room I'm in, it's a bit of a black hole for Wi-Fi signal, so I'm having to use a range extender, but we'll see how we get on this time. So if we just uh, set this test off, and I also tested this actually um, a couple of hours ago, and it only gave me a reading of 0 0.04 megabits per second, which seems dodgy to me because I have a 100 megabit connection. So, but it, it seems to be doing okay this time. It's reaching about 20 megabytes there, and the upload speed's about average. It'll probably average about 5 or 6 megabits a second. So it's not done too badly this time, but just be a bit weary that the Wi-Fi has been inconsistent at best on this device. Now, last but not least, we are going to have a look at YouTube, and I've installed the YouTube app that's available from B-Link's Little App Market they've included, and it's the YouTube TV version, and it seems to run okay now that the Wi-Fi stabilised itself a bit. Couldn't get it to open before because the connection kept dropping, but it seems absolutely fine to me, and so let's just go ahead and play one of the videos and see how it plays. You're probably not going to get a great idea again with me having to use this camera, but yeah, here's the video playing, and it plays okay, and it plays in HD as well, which is nice, and it seems to be working okay, so that's one little positive to come out of this review. So this pretty much brings us to the end, so we're going to have a quick recap now, and just kind of talk about the pros and cons of this device. So I just want to cut this review short now really because it's really not going well. Overall thoughts, not very impressed with this box at all. I think B-Link have really dropped the ball with this one. I think it's a grave missed opportunity as well when it has such a unique selling point with it being the only box that boasts 6K video playback capabilities. But unfortunately that 6K playback is not justifiable when buying this device considering all the other faults and problems and bugs that I've experienced. The Wi-Fi is inconsistent at best, it cuts out for no reason at all quite often, the download speeds and upload speeds fluctuate wildly from time to time, one minute it could be 20 megabits a second like you've seen, I tested again two moments later and I was getting a speed of 0.04 megabits per second, so very inconsistent Wi-Fi. I don't know if you saw, and I didn't mention this, but I was using a mouse and then an air mouse with this box. The mouse pointer is buggy, it does not take well to a mouse pointer. 
um, or a mouse input device. It just shakes and jitters all over the place. I jigged around the settings, but it didn't make any difference, so that's buggy as well. Video playback was okay on the plus side on YouTube. That seemed to run okay once the Wi-Fi had stabilised. The gaming again, not so great though. It's performs around the same as a much cheaper and lower spec device so that's not a great selling point for it either also the antutu score though was quite high it was coming back at a mid to high level range device at a score of over 42,000, which is one of the highest i've ever seen while reviewing these boxes so that's one positive but again not enough to justify maybe buying this box but if you're curious i'll leave all these specs in the description or i'll post links to the specs anyway but yeah that kind of brings us to the end of the review unfortunately it's not a great device in its current state maybe it's firmware it could just use a good update because the hardware is all there it's all ready to be an amazing piece of kit but unfortunately there's just a lot of work needs done with it i think anyway i really hope you've enjoyed this review i'm sorry about the quality and it won't happen again i'm sure but i hope you've enjoyed it so if you liked it give me a like if you disliked it give me a dislike as well that's cool also leave me a comment in the description with any suggestions or comments or feedback come and subscribe to the channel have a look at our other videos join us on the website mxqproject.com follow us on twitter at mxqproject come over to the facebook group again all links will be in the description anyway i've been scott you have been watching the mxq project and i shall see you in the next video